Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy, and in this learning outcome, we're going to begin looking at the structure and properties of engineering materials. Now, whilst I don't want this to start off like a chemistry lesson, it is important as engineers to understand a little bit about the atomic structure of materials so that we can understand the type of bonding that occurs between those atoms. In addition, once we understand the atomic structure, we can then look at how those atoms are arranged and how that affects the general properties of the material. So I'm going to be referring to a couple of resources. First of all, we have a simplified periodic table here, which you can access through the study platform at the Engineers Academy. And secondly, we're going to be looking at the information sheet for this particular outcome, which will give us a little bit more background as to why atoms bond together in the way that they do. So here we have a simplified periodic table, and I'll go into the reasons why it's been simplified in a moment. But what we notice, and we read this just the same way we would a book, we work from top left, and we move across the rows. Once we've completed the first row, we go to the second row and so on. So we're always reading from left to right. And the way that this order is decided is by something called the atomic number. And in the top right of each box, we can see the atomic number. So for the first square, which happens to be hydrogen, we have an atomic number of one. We move along that row to helium, which has an atomic number of two. We then move to the second row where we have lithium with an atomic number of three, and so on. And if you trace that through, you'll see that that atomic number increases by one each time. Now what that atomic number represents is the number of protons in that given element. It's probably worth mentioning at this stage that what we mean by an element is a material that's made up of only one type of atom. So the element hydrogen is only made up of hydrogen atoms and the element helium is only made up of helium atoms, and so on. So we have the atomic number, which tells us which atom we're referring to. The next thing to consider on this periodic table is the number in the bottom right-hand corner. So again, for hydrogen, this number is one. As I mentioned at the start, this is a simplified periodic table, so what I've actually done is I've rounded this number, and I'll come on to the reasons behind that again in a moment. So this number in the bottom corner is called relative mass. So we have that the relative mass of hydrogen is 1. But if we look at helium, helium has a relative mass of 4. That means a helium atom weighs 4 times more than a hydrogen atom. We can then look at lithium, which has an atomic mass of 7. So that weighs 7 times more than a hydrogen atom, and so on. And you'll see that number increasing. But this number doesn't increase by 1 at a time because what this relative mass, or what this atomic mass represents, is the mass of each atom relative to the other atoms. Now, if we think about what makes up an atom, there's three particles, and I'll just refer to the equations and information sheet as I go through this. So we have three particles in every atom. We have protons, we have neutrons, and we have electrons. Now, generally, people remember what a proton and an electron are, because protons are positively charged particles and electrons are negatively charged particles. And we see this by our right hand column here. The relative charge of a proton is plus one and the relative charge of an electron is minus one. The reason it's relative charge is because the actual charge won't be one, but it's one relative to the neutron. Now the neutron is a particle which has no charge. So we have a proton with a positive charge we have an electron with a negative charge, and we have a neutron, neutron for neutral, which has no charge. And each of those particles has a relative mass, as we see in this middle column. So we assume that the mass of a proton is one, and the mass of a neutron is one. Again, it's relative, because that's relative to the other particles. So we assume that a proton and a neutron weigh the same as each other. But the relative mass of an electron is approximately zero. So the mass of an electron is negligible compared to the other two particles. Again, it's approximately zero because obviously it does have some mass, but its mass is very, very small compared to the other particles. So now we can go back to our periodic table because what this atomic mass tells us, or what this atomic mass must represent, is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Now the reason behind that is because an electron has no mass. So the bottom right represents the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And we see that as we go through. So for helium, there's four protons plus neutrons, or the sum of the protons plus neutrons is four. For lithium, it's seven. For beryllium, it's nine, and so on. 
Now here's where the periodic table becomes really useful because the number in the top right corner, which we called the atomic number, is the number of protons. And the number in the bottom right hand corner is the atomic mass. So let's take beryllium for example, down here second in the second row. We have an atomic number of four, meaning there's four protons, but we have an atomic mass of nine. Well, if the atomic mass is nine and an electron has no mass, then there must be five neutrons because four plus five gives us the atomic mass of nine. Let's do this again. Let's move along the row and let's go for carbon. So we see that carbon has an atomic number of six, meaning it has six protons or six positively charged particles. And each one of those particles has a relative mass of one. But in the bottom right hand corner, a carbon atom has an atomic mass of 12. Therefore, we need another six masses or another six particles with a mass. Well, if an electron has no mass, then there must be six neutrons because six plus six gives us 12. And we could continue that for any number of atoms. So the second part of this is what we're representing here at atoms. And the other important fact about an atom is that it has no charge. For something not to have any charge, its positives and negatives must balance out. So let's stick here with beryllium. We know that beryllium has four protons, so four positive charges. In order to balance out those four positive charges, we must also have four electrons. So beryllium has four protons, four electrons, and we've also said it has five neutrons in order to give us our atomic mass of nine. Let's go for magnesium directly below. We have an atomic number of 12, so 12 protons. Therefore, because its charge needs to be neutral, it must have 12 electrons. So magnesium has 12 protons, 12 electrons, and it also has 12 neutrons to give us our atomic mass because 12 plus 12 gives us our 24. So the last thing to consider is how this simplified periodic table differs from the actual periodic table. And I mentioned that one of the things that I've done here was I had rounded the atomic mass. So we've said that the atomic mass of lithium is seven. However, if you was to refer to the actual periodic table, that number would be slightly different. In fact, it would be 6.94. And this leaves us with the question as to why that number isn't exactly seven. If protons weigh one, neutrons weigh one, and electrons weigh nothing. In actual fact, I guess you would assume that if there was four neutrons and three protons and some electrons, that that number should be slightly higher than seven. And this is where we have to introduce the idea of an isotope. And an isotope is an atom which may have a different number of neutrons. And whilst I don't want to complicate this, it's important to understand this idea so that when we look at an actual periodic table, we have an appreciation as to why these numbers aren't exact as we see here on the simplified version. So lithium, from the model that we've just spoken about, has three protons and four neutrons. And that's true in roughly 93% of naturally occurring lithium atoms. So roughly 93% of all naturally occurring lithium atoms have four neutrons. But there are a small percentage, roughly 7%, that only have three neutrons. We actually call that lithium-6. And it's because of these isotopes, plus the tiny masses of the electron, that these aren't always perfect round numbers as we see here. But for the purpose of our understanding of materials and how they bond and how they're structured, we're going to work with this simplified view. I only mention this point so that when you see an actual periodic table, you have an appreciation as to why these numbers differ. So the important things to remember is on the periodic table, the top right hand number represents the atomic number, which is the number of protons or positively charged particles, but is also the number of electrons or negatively charged particles because they must balance. The number in the bottom right corner is the atomic mass, which is basically the sum of the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Protons and neutrons have a relative mass, whereas an electron has a negligible mass when compared to the other two particles. In the next video, we'll look at how we can interpret the information a little bit further to understand how electrons arrange themselves and how materials bond together.